all welcome and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I want to share some very tragic stories of domestic violence with you. But before I start, you may have noticed that I was not doing videos for a few days, and I want to take a couple minutes to talk about why. If you want to go straight to the stories in this video, they start at 7 minutes and 45 seconds. Okay. I needed to take a step back. This past weekend, I read a horrific story about domestic violence where a husband shot and killed his wife in front of their children. Then, after a barricaded situation, police found that he had taken his own life. The next day, I was in a true crime Facebook group I'm in, and I found out that the woman I read about was a member of the group, a member whose name I'd seen before many times a member whose comments I had read. When I found out who it was, even though I didn't know her in real life, it took the wind out of my sails. She was one of us, interested in true crime stories, who interacted with us in a Facebook group. Then she, herself, was murdered. By her husband. In front of her children. It hit me hard. I've done stories in the past where I've spoken about women who were murdered, who I either knew from a true crime group or I followed online. But this one was number four for me. Four women now, who I've known of or followed online, who have been murdered. Just in the short time I've been doing YouTube. It broke my heart. It deflated me completely. And... Not gonna lie, it messed with my head. It's just too much. And it's on top of the horrific mass shootings that are already taking place almost daily here in the U.S. I cried. Then I saw that a Facebook group was started to help victims of domestic violence in her memory. It's called the Melissa Yinda Group for Battered Spouses. I joined the group. Then I started reading all the comments about people who knew Melissa. And it just kept hitting me harder and harder. I had to stop reading them. Then the group asked for anyone who had experienced abuse to offer to be there and listen to women who needed to talk. I wanted to do it, but I couldn't. I didn't feel like I could take any more. Then I went to answer the comments on my last videos. And I couldn't. I felt sick to my stomach, and I didn't understand why. I love talking to you all in the comments. I love reading your thoughts and getting to know you. It's one of my favorite things about my channel. So, I figured I just needed to take a day off. Then the next day, I felt even worse. And I didn't even want to look at YouTube or Facebook. I needed more time away. So I took it and spent it with my kids. And every time I thought I needed to make a video, I got nervous and anxious. I just didn't want to go back. I didn't want to read any more. I didn't want to hear that anyone else I got to know and care about got hurt. I didn't know why my mind went there, but it did. It wasn't rational, but I couldn't stop it. Then I realized how much the people I interact with online and on my channel start to mean to me. When I see your names over and over and I read your comments and stories, I become attached. You mean something to me. I noticed that a while ago. When I'd see someone in my comments for a while, then they'd drop off for a while. And I'd find myself wondering if you're okay and hoping you were just busy or watching another channel. The time I took to answer all the comments on my videos and the interactions we had were important to me. And I always wanted to make sure I thanked each and every one of you for taking the time to watch, not realizing how personal it all was to me. I never thought of how I'd feel if anything bad ever happened to one of my viewers and I found out about it. I didn't think about that until Melissa's murder hit me like a ton of bricks. And I barely knew her. But I knew of her. I was used to seeing her name and reading her comments in the Facebook group. 
Once I realized how personal it all was to me, I understood where my fear came from. I already endured four murdered people I knew online, and I couldn't take it anymore. Then I had a nightmare about the shooting I suffered as a teenager. I discussed it in a previous video, and I never, ever have nightmares about it. Frankly, I pretty much never even think about it until I do the occasional selfie and am reminded of it by the scars on my forehead. Then I just say, oh yeah, forgot about that, and move on. Then I started to feel anxious just at the thought of returning to my channel, or that Facebook group. I was already hurting. My memories were surfacing, and then I became fearful. Fearful that I was becoming too attached. Because it's easy to do. You know that. Especially when they're people as kind as all of you. So understanding what was happening to me, internally, I needed to put myself in check, and quick. I can't let my fears get the best of me, and I don't want to leave the true crime community. But I feel like I'm holding on too tight. It all means so much to me. You all mean so much to me. But I need to take a step back until I can somehow get my mind straight. I hope this doesn't come out wrong, but I need to step back from answering all my comments every video. As much as I love it, I take it personally and I start to care about everyone way more than I realize. Not that it's a bad thing to care, but I start to care too much and that's not healthy for me. I hope that makes sense. I don't want to be afraid to read my comments for fear that something has happened to someone I care about. I can't take that right now. It's hard enough to report on these awful stories, but it's a whole other thing to know what happened to someone you knew, or even knew of. So, please know how so very much I appreciate you watching and commenting on my videos while I take a step back and try to get my head right again. I need to get the wind back into my sails. This one just hit too hard. I need this, and I hope you all understand. Thank you for listening. Now, on to my first story. This tragic story involves a mother, 28-year-old Molly Lillard, who was a former volleyball star at the same university I attended, the University of Michigan, and the daughter of former New York Jets wide receiver Al Toon. According to news reports, she had an eight-month-old baby who was in the home when she was shot and killed by her husband on April 11th of 2021. Police said they responded to a call about a shooting at Molly's home in Scottsdale, Arizona, around 5 p.m., and they found her suffering from gunshot wounds outside in front of her house. Then... Just like the story of Melissa Yinda from my Facebook group, she was rushed to the hospital, where she later died from her injuries. After the shooting, police said Molly's husband went back into the home, and police tried to talk him out. Hours later, after receiving no response from her husband, a SWAT team entered the home and found him dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. Police say their eight-month-old baby is in the care of family at this time. The couple had only been married for two years when he took her life. Then, on April 14th of 2021, 52-year-old Lisbeth Mass was shot and killed in broad daylight while on her job as a flagger for a construction site. Police in New York said they received a 911 call about a shooting at a construction site on City Island after a man approached a worker on a bike and shot her. Witnesses said she was sitting on the sidewalk when a man on a bike approached her. She got up to run away from him, and he followed her and shot her. Six times. Then, as he got back onto his bike to flee the scene, witnesses said that Lisbeth's boyfriend hit him with his car, then threw him on the hood of the car and began punching him. Lisbeth was rushed to the hospital, where she died from her injuries. 
Police say they're unclear about any relationship between Lisbeth and her killer, but early reports stated that he was an ex-boyfriend. People.com Crime said police don't believe there was a relationship between the two, but that he would go by the construction site to talk to Lisbeth frequently, and he had the day prior to killing her as well. They said he brought a sandwich to her, and the two engaged in conversation, but they don't know what they spoke about. They say they don't yet know what set him off. Lisbeth's boyfriend said she was beautiful. She was everybody's person, everybody's friend. She was the only one at the party who got everybody dancing, and everywhere she went, she drew a crowd. As always, I'll be praying for the victims of these horrific crimes and for the children left behind, who are now without parents and with the memory of the horror that took place in their own homes. I will also be praying for the victims of the tragic shootings that have been taking place all over the United States. Thank you again for your understanding that I need to step back from my comments for a while, and please know that it is necessary for me to be able to get my mind right after all this tragedy. Thank you all so very much for watching. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you on my next video.